before we go to our Janae, let me jump in here because you said a bunch of great things, both of you. And one of the things is when our ministry uh, is a tied to our theology, which you have so succinctly said. And when mm -hmm. we get back to having a, co a communal theology, mm -hmm. that's when we're going to have a greater prophetic voice because the prosperity gospel lends itself to individualistic yeah. theology, Jesus. which is not beneficial. Second, we really, and I know Bishop William Young has been one of the uh, local and national yeah. proponents mental of health, this. Yeah. We really need to deal with this mental health piece. You, I remember, and I'm old enough to remember, when you didn't hear about um, black snipers. When you heard a sniper, mm -hmm. you knew it. the sniper <laughs> didn't look like us. Uh -huh. But now you see all kind of things happening. We're going into the Navy yard, shooting people up. We're driving cars because of postpartum depression mm -hmm. and trying to run into the Capitol. We are not dealing with really an epidemic. We have a health emergency. Mm -hmm in our neighborhoods which this speaks to but i want to stay here for right now because i didn't give you a chance to speak so go ahead and jump in actually I'm, i, I want to jump on the mental health go right aspect ahead because um we undervalue mm -hmm. the importance of mental well-being mm -hmm. and we have um dismissed therapists psychiatrists and psychologists as a valuable part of our community. Mm -hmm. We um, will go to the doctor and we'll get medications for our physical health, but we won't treat mm -hmm. our mental stability and our mental well-being with the same level of importance. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, and this is a huge generalization, but in the black community, there's a stigma about getting counseling. Mm -hmm. In the black community, there's a stigma about needing some, some inpatient care, two or three mm -hmm. days to be on suicide watch because you're having thoughts that are unnatural or, mm -hmm. or thoughts that are different. Um, and so I think we do, we do our communities a disservice, particularly in the black church, by saying or, or, or by almost positioning therapists and psychiatrists and psychologists mm -hmm. as a, as an unnecessary part to the christian life having a good therapist and a good counselor is 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 valuable yeah. having a prayer life is valuable having a consistent you know christian discipline is mm -hmm. valuable but there are moments in our lives when we must pursue professional yes. help we've got mm -hmm. kids who would benefit a great deal by having a regular visit sitting on somebody's sofa and being able to talk about problems and situations. So for, for me, while I think that, that economic empowerment and economic vitality is a very important part of the black community and a very, and a very important part for the black church to address, just as important, I think, is the role the black church needs to play in mental health for our community. Mm -hmm. We have too many people walking on the streets mm -hmm. who need mental mm -hmm. attention. But let me, let me, let me jump yeah. in. Yeah. I know Earl, yeah, wants up there. Right, Earl, right. Earl, hold on a second. Because I'm going to let you come in right after it. But, but now, I want to just frame this for the audience because we think of mental health as people losing it, as people, you know, doing irrational right. things. But we also have to look at mental health from the perspective of young 13-year-old boys being able to shoot somebody and kill them without even thinking about mm -hmm. it. That's also mm -hmm. an aspect of mental health. So right. we talk about what's happening in Chicago, that's a part of mental health. We talk about some of the crazy stuff we see happening in Memphis and all over this nation. Uh, Newark is almost as bad as Chicago. People are shooting, they have a, a murder a day mm -hmm. in, in, to some respect in Newark right now. All of that right. ties into mental health. Go right ahead, Earl. Yeah, man, and I love to hear pastors and preachers talk about the realities of mental health because it shows that at least these people who are having this conversation have a broader theology that seems to be more uh, than, broader than what's prevalent in the black church. My wife uh, is a social worker, so she works in the mental health field, which is probably one of the reasons I'm still sane now, right? <laughs> oh, so, you uh, are? Go ahead. To, uh, <laughs> equate, um, we, we have thought that the answer to mental health issues prior to 
the expansion of our contemporary theology was simply pray about it. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to stress this point. One of the points that I've been trying to make uh, in many different platforms and places. The problem that the black church has in the 21st century is a theology problem. Our God is just too small. So until we can expand the way we see God and say that God is at work, even in mental health professionals, I would love for every church, to, at least, especially if they had the resources to do it, to employ a mental health professional so that when our, our pastoral and ministerial prayers and counseling does not work, we can refer, to, we can refer somebody to a, a, a mental health professional. Well, let me reframe the last piece of what you said. It's not so much that it doesn't work, right. but that it needs additional augmentation. But go ahead. You it's, no, no, no. Right, exactly that. Is that, is, is that uh, in and of itself, with the, with the complexity of the problems that our people face, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally, we need as much as many hands on deck as possible in the name of Jesus. Go right ahead. And 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 I just want to add uh, on, on on this when we talk about mental health issues, and this is what I'm talking about: what morality looks like in 2013. Mm-hmm. Morality means to have a, a substantial or at least addressing um, the best way you possibly can mental health issues. But let us be real here for a moment. It's not only the black church that struggled with mental health. In this country, we struggle with mental health issues. We just don't do mental health well, period, in this country. Any mental health professional would tell you that more funding is needed, more uh, um, therapists are, are needed. What are we, we, we close hospitals that could help people with mental health issues. We don't even have adequate housing. The homeless uh, pro- problem in this city could be eradicated by 50% if we just had homes or, or just places where many of the homeless can just take their meds regularly. Mm-hmm. Regularly, regularly taking your medications will have you functioning in this society. Half of that would be just eradicated, mm-hmm. but we just don't have the facilities. We as a society, don't do mental health well at all. And and, and, and and part of the black church's theology and public witness should be, listen, let's do something about this issue that is profoundly affecting people in our communities, but also profoundly affecting all Americans across um, the spectrum. But now let me jump in and raise a danger zone, so to speak, because it's controversial. The whole piece of sexuality. And I'm, I'm not necessarily bringing it up right, in terms of whether, you know, who your partner should be. But I'm bringing it up in terms of what really should be a national emergency, HIV and AIDS, mm-hmm. you know, and STDs. Because STDs are on the rise, and that's on the rise to the point where you have an STD that penicillin can't do anything with. They don't really have medicine for it. Right. Are you telling me then that what we have been preaching and teaching, our abstinence programs, just that, Reverend, <laughs> it's not well, working. It's, well, they're not working. Just say oh, no. I'm shocked. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> see, see, now these these, Here, these sarcastic you know, preachers. This is, this go ahead, you're in trouble. Because there used to be a time when a when we could preach about purity, mm. and and. 90%, I'm, I'm really overgeneralized, but 80% of the congregation could understand and get you on purity. Mm-hmm. These days, purity simply means I haven't slept with more than 20 people. <laughs> but I mean, in, in the grand scheme of things, the, the right. idea of right. abstinence is a myth amongst adolescents, amongst but, teenagers, but minute, and especially preacher. amongst I'm young wait, adults. Wait a minute, preacher. I, I need to push back on some of oh. what you said. Uh, Ever since the Lord said, be fruitful and multiply, <laughs> mm-hmm. folk been trying to do that. <laughs> so, the you, I mean, in, 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 you know, they've been trying to nope each other in a biblical sense. <laughs> uh-huh. right? so and I want to add to that, that when the text in Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27 says, be fruitful and multiply, yeah. technically nobody's married yet, so who is the Lord talking to? Now see, you, <laughs> now see, you trying to take us to another place. Uh, I ain't mad. I'm not mad. Now see, you got me speaking in colloquialism. <laughs> but man, you got my point, which is we've always had out of wedlock births. We've always been sleeping around, maybe not as pervasive as now, which is part of your mm-hmm. point. But this has always existed. 
but we've handled it differently. You know, maybe, and I'm not saying we always handle it in healthy ways, mm -hmm. but maybe your aunt was really your mama, or you know how we do. We, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so you understand that. Mm -hmm. But we're at the point now where we got to cut out some of the pretense. So in other words, getting to part of your sarcasm, yeah, yeah. you you kind of beat me to the punch. Yeah, yeah. You should be abs. You know, you should um, practice abstinence. But if you don't, and you find yourself <laughs> now, that's real. Uh, right. You find yourself in a abstinence situation. Is. Here is what's called the condom. But <laughs> this is what happens. You sure. need to. You, uh, no, I'm, what I need to say this. Uh, you need to use Go this. Ahead, you need to use this to protect <laughs> yourself. And we need to give some of that. To, and I'm gonna make some folk mad. We need to give some of that to some of you old folk. Who say you can't make anybody pregnant anymore and you out here running and then you get into something you yeah, can't yeah. give back. My, my. No, I'm just but we don't want to talk about I that. Go right ahead. That is exactly my point. <laughs> so what happens is in the church, and again I'm over generalizing over generalizing. When we begin to talk about sex, sexuality, and purity, it is always in the context of abstinence, which is a model that is outdated. It is a model that does not have present-day relevance. And then you are speaking to a generation of people who are saying, be serious. There are eighth graders and seventh graders who have orgies in middle school bathrooms. Mm -hmm. So when preacher wants to get up in the pulpit on Sunday morning and talk about just say no, your eighth grader is having more sex than mom and daddy in the bedroom down the street or, you know, down the hallway. So... In, in, in the context of this whole conversation about sex, sexuality, abstinence, protection, <laughs> prevention, the conversation has to get real and the conversation has to get honest. As, as, a, as a church, we have covered up and we've been um, too timid to have real conversations with the, with the most vulnerable in our community, mm -hmm. our young people, they are the most vulnerable. And so what happens is we ostracize the 13 year old girl who gets pregnant, right? Mm -hmm. And we ostracize her not realizing that before she got pregnant, she already had gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, and a whole host of, mm -hmm. a whole host of other diseases, which makes it a public health matter because she's also sexually active with more than one young man who's sexually active with more than one young woman or more than one young man. And so they share each other and they share diseases and um, in a real unfortunate case they're sitting in our pews and we act like they don't exist mm -hmm. but here's and, let's, and let's talk about the genderized hip hypocrisy part of the reason I think the sexuality conversation is so shallow is because it brings up this notion of male privilege that functions very highly in the black church. Mm -hmm. So we would condemn and criticize the young sister so she has to get up in front of the congregation and ask for forgiveness. But the pastor that she's been sleeping with or the musician that she was sleeping with or the choir member that she was sleeping mm -hmm. with or the deacon that she was sleeping with, none of them have to get up and confess and ask for their sins to be forgiven right. because there's a double standard that work in the black church. So part of the reason we want to talk about sexuality in a more broad sense is because we're trying to hold on to black male privilege. And I think what we've done mm -hmm. to address some of what you just said is not healthy. In other words, instead, and, and you kind of made the point, instead of addressing the whole situation, we address none of it mm -hmm. because it'd be too dangerous to address. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something I did. I was the chaplain for a short period of time at Lemoyne Owen College. And during one of the chapels, I started talking to the young people because basically the freshman seminar was in the chapel. So I started talking to them and I said, now let me talk to you about how you share your bodies because you got to understand that when you share your body, you make a connection with someone. And so what happens is when you don't understand that, you see somebody, you're attracted to them. You get together with them. You don't find out what they're about. You don't ask them, you know, or find out what type of person they are. But because you're attracted to them and your hormones are raging, you connect with them. Mm -hmm. So then after a while, you start cutting class. You start finding time where you can connect with them in that way. Have sex. Let's just be plain. Mm -hmm. Right? You keep doing that. 
and then you find out that you have nothing in common with them mm -hmm. except having sex and you want to get away from them but you say you see you can't so you keep having sex with somebody you can't stand mm -hmm. and you can't figure out why mm -hmm. you can't shake them loose that's because y'all have made a connection mm -hmm. so then when you disconnect from them you rip the fabric of yourself you leave pieces mm -hmm. of yourself everywhere mm -hmm. and then you can't understand why you have problems connecting the people you want to connect to mm -hmm. that's because you're everywhere and this goes for men as well as women mm -hmm. you're everywhere mm -hmm. so you don't understand how your sexuality is tied into <coughs> your being you just see it as an act mm -hmm. you just see it as a function just like going to the bathroom that's why eighth graders can have orgies in the middle school bathroom because they see it as a function that's why some of them can say, all right, I might get pregnant. I might get diseases. Let's look at the eighth grader's mind. Mm -hmm. So instead of letting this boy have sex with me, I'll give him oral sex. Mm -hmm. And I'll be good at that mm -hmm. so that I can attract mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. Not knowing you still can get diseases. And then that's a whole nother spin that's affecting your mm -hmm. mind. And we have not done a good job. And I had to raise my hand and say I'm guilty too. Mm -hmm of addressing some of this in the church. And it's addressable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think too, because we've not done it, our young people are afraid to come to us with some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Because they're afraid of judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's because also, to kind of get to Earl's point, we put ourselves on these pedestals and we've not let people know that we were misters and misses before we were reverends and saved. Mm -hmm. And some of these mistakes they've made, we've made. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we're not real enough mm -hmm. to put it out there so that we can help. And I would also add that um, there is, we have this cloak of secrecy sometimes in, in the black church where we don't want to talk in public or talk out loud about some of the real harshness I mean, the, the, the things that happen in our bedrooms, we're, you know, we're pretty secretive mm -hmm. about those types of things. And it would really be to our benefit if not only those of us who stand in the pulpit to proclaim about it, but those who are in the audience who, you know, who sometimes give you pushback and say, Pastor, don't talk about that in church. You know, Reverend, don't talk, you know, we don't, we don't come to church to hear you talk to us about how to manage our bedrooms. We don't come to church to hear mm -hmm. you talk to us about what they're doing in high schools or in middle schools. We just want to hear you get up here and make a shout and hallelujah mm -hmm. and a thank you, Jesus. Um, and the, the, my hope for the black church is that we will preach and proclaim the total gospel of Jesus Christ that wants us to be total and complete beings and not just the, the, the ones who preach what pleases the people in the pew. Because, you know, sir, ma'am, I realize that you don't come to church to hear about, you know, um, preventing sexually transmitted disease. And I understand you don't come to church to hear about less salt, less fat, less sugar in your diet. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is Jesus came to give you life and life more abundantly. And there are practices that we have in our own lives that 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 cut ourselves short from the promise that Jesus Christ came to give us, mm -hmm. right? And so when when you first opened up the whole idea about health prevention, it is a a critical part uh, in my opinion about you know the rhetoric that we use about how we help our people be mentally and spiritually well but also physically well the way we eat the way we exercise or don't exercise the way we you know engage in sexual activities or don't engage in sexual activities those are all a part of our lives as spiritual beings and physical beings and I think should be a part of our conversation and when you look at the symbolism between the marriage relationships, for example, and the church and the, and, and the Lord, the bride of Christ, mm -hmm. look at that symbolism. Mm -hmm. So that symbolizes not only relationship, but it symbolizes intimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet we don't want to talk about intimacy. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's not too much that separates sexuality and spirituality. But we don't want to talk about it. And that's interesting, mm -hmm. as the church, we don't deal with it. Mm -hmm. 
as the church, we don't tell folk that you can't put that fat back in those greens. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you need to leave those chitlins alone. <laughs> I just made about forty people mad. All right, uh, but we don't. We uh, you moderation, know. man. You got you got to talk about moderation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, I threw a rock and it hit somebody. But anyway, y'all y'all get my point. But now let let's close this down. We we've gone over time, but this conversation is needed for those of you who are watching us mm. uh, within next week. We're going to put this up on our YouTube channel. It will also be repeated on this network so you have a chance to see this again. But we needed to have this dialogue. And periodically we'll talk about different issues and areas of the church where we can critique it while at the same time we can affirm it. Because, you know, we have to do both. But what I want to do in this segment is give each of you a chance to tell us what you're doing. We're going to start with the great Dr. Earl Fisher on the phone. If he can tell us what he's doing, then we'll go to uh, the Reverend R. Janae, great Dr. Pitts Murdoch. Mm -hmm. She can tell us what she's doing, and then we'll end with the great uh, teacher of theologues over here. Okay, mm -hmm. so Earl, go right ahead. Tell us what you're doing real quick. Uh, let me thank you again for Black Thought, man. I think it's a relevant uh, outlet in the African-American community, and you talk about some relevant issues, so I hope that we can support that. I personally am just trying to continue to merge the academy and the church at a real grassroots level. So you can meet me at Avicenna in 3890 Mill Branch in Whitehaven on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And I am also teaching some contemporary theology courses at Rose College. And prayerfully, if the Lord says the same, I look to be in a Ph.D. program. I'm actually auditing a course now, or at least trying to audit a course now at the University of Memphis. In the same program that, that Dr. Andre Johnson was in, I told him I was going to be like him when I grow up. So maybe I'm growing up just a little bit. Hold but uh, also keep your eyes and your ears open for the Southern Action Coalition. I'm sure Janae and Andre both can talk more about that. But we are trying to make sure that we can put a collective cadre of voices together that represent a more multifaceted and diverse representation of the black church. So those are some of the things that I'm doing. And check out the Pastor and the Professor on YouTube, too. All right, go right ahead. Um, thank you again. It's always good to be in the presence of great thoughts and great minds. Um, I am enjoying life. I am uh, expecting baby number two. My right. husband and I are uh, will be welcoming our second yeah. son in February. Yeah. Yay! Jeffrey Allen Murdoch Jr., I love you. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Lord, we, we saw uh, that flow. We uh, saw that yeah. flow in the camera. Oh, 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 camera started melting oh. when Kiki going. <laughs> um, but I am really enjoying uh, this season of life that, I, that I'm in now. I am finishing up um, another degree, wrapping up an MBA at the University of, of Memphis. Um, and, you know, that's on the academic side. The, the most fun that I'm having is consulting churches. Mm -hmm. um, I've gained a tremendous amount of insight um, having served at one of the largest mega churches here in Memphis, mm -hmm. Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church, having served uh, in Detroit um, at Triumph Church, which is now um, the number one fastest growing church in the country. I served mm -hmm. there before I moved to Memphis. Um, but even the relationships that I have with pastors and churches across the country, I have gained a wealth of insight on um, ministry development, organization, staff development, um, and also um, I'm able to balance the business perspectives. How do you have a sound fiscal budget? How do you have um, you know, effective stewardship practices? And how do you manage the financial and business sides of, the, of your church while also honoring the, the gifting and the call that God has placed on you? So we're having great fun doing that. Um, I'm also uh, having great fun preaching every week. These days, uh, my Sundays um, are open and I get a chance to travel and I get a chance to, uh, to preach not only around Memphis but across the country. So that has been uh, tremendously rewarding as well. So I look forward uh, to the doors that God is opening in my life and um, look forward to um, you know working more closely with this brother over here uh, mm. in the Netters program at uh, Memphis Theological Seminary. So uh, that's that's me. And she is a preacher. All right. She, she is, is a she is guilty. Thank All you. right. <laughs> go go right ahead, sir. 
Thank you, Dr. Hutchison, for uh, this forum and this opportunity to come and to share. Um, just a couple of things. Um, uh, Reverend Janae mentioned about the Netter Certificate Program over at uh, MTS. Classes start tonight. Um, the new term start tonight, so if you're interested in coming to take in your building, your ministry class, or tomorrow, um, the one I'm teaching, Outreach and Mission, come on tonight or tomorrow. We will take your application at 168 East Parkway, Memphis Theological Seminary. Just get on the campus. We're real easy to find. Uh, I also serve as pastor, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Gifts of Life Ministries. Uh, right now, we're worshiping at 1542 Jackson, and we are about to start this Sunday a um, new worshiping community at 11 o'clock at Caritas Village, a restaurant on 2509 Harvard, um, a new way of doing ministry. Uh, uh, it should be fun. It should be exciting. It's a new uh, mission group um, that we are starting um, there, so come on out to that. If, if you like, book just dropped. About a month ago, Urban God Talk, uh, constructing a hip hop spirituality. You can go to Amazon uh, and, and just click on uh, on the um, the lower price to get the best price. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, of the book, uh, I have copies, of, of course, of the book as well too. Urban God Talk, um, talking about uh, how. Uh, there is a spirituality and a theological paradigm even within uh, hip hop culture, and uh, we're excited about that as well. And just doing the teaching and um, writing, and um, hopefully uh, by the end of the year, hopefully and prayerfully, we'll get another um, book out that's going to be an ebook on um, church, on being the church. Well, you see, we did not ask people who were were not busy to be on this show. They're busy in their own right. They're doing tangible mm -hmm. and fruitful ministry in their own right. Oh, let me say this, too. I love you, Lisa Jones Johnson. <laughs> you got to get it in. You got to uh -huh. get it in. Right, right. Uh -huh. and, and, and look, and the lovely to be a shotgun the whole while. while you might as well come on, man. Uh, Eddie, take the cameras off <laughs> for a minute. I need to. We about to end anyway. Put the cap. Yeah, thank you. With all this love floating in there, let me say, and I know that she's watching. The love of my life, Rebecca Medlock right. Hutchinson. Do love you. You support me. I appreciate it. You know all these folk flowing this love everywhere, oh, but Lord, you know Lord. I got you. But anyway, anyway. Let's bring the focus. But actually, that's good to see all this love. It's getting uh, all yeah. all on my lapels. It's <laughs> but anyway, on a serious note, I'm glad that all of you were here. Glad that we were able to engage you by phone. Uh, Brother Fisher, thank you all so much. It's time to go. I hope this conversation has blessed you. It's time for me to go. And as I always do, brother man, sister woman, young boy, young girl, put your mind in gear. And put your thinking cap on. Peace. Hmm. I just had a black thought. Put your mind in gear. And put your thinking cap on.